So good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to have this opportunity to say a few words um, uh, coming coming up to Christmas. The, 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 the reflection now is is about the it's for the fourth Sunday of Advent, um, and uh, when the when the gospel is is the gospel of the Annunciation. So the focus is on on Mary. The mother of Jesus. Uh, we listen to the story of the Annunciation as told by Saint Luke uh, this this coming Sunday, and it ends with Mary giving her consent to God's plan, giving her consent to cooperate wholeheartedly with God in the mystery of the incarnation. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me. The moment Mary gave her consent, the most stupendous event that ever happened or ever could happen uh, on this earth took place. The Son of God took on our human nature in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, we are fami very familiar with this story, really. Uh, many of us from, from childhood, we, we pray the Angelus, uh, the prayer in which this awe-inspiring act of God's love is remembered. If God had contented himself with sending John the Baptist to us, to urge us to repent and to assure us of God's forgiveness if we did so, uh, this would already be a great act of love for us on the part of God. There was no one born of woman greater than John the Baptist, but great as he was, John the Baptist could not do for us all that God wanted to do for us. No ordinary human, not even an angel, could make us the adopted children of God and heirs of heaven. In God's plan, it was necessary that his divine son become man, that he share our humanity so that we could share in his divine life. The first thing we need to do in the face of this mystery is to stand back, pause, and reflect. God's, could, could God's love for us have gone any further? <clears throat> Our creation, the fact that we exist as human beings on this earth, is already a great gift of God. But suppose it all ended with death. Suppose we were all allowed a long lifespan, say 80 or even 100 years, without sickness or pain of any kind, a life of unbroken happiness. Well, what value would it have if it all ended with death? However, when God created us, he so planned that our time here would be but a stage, a stepping stone, in fact, towards a life without end, sharing his eternal happiness in heaven. God the Son, the second person of the most holy trinity, has become man. He has become one of us and shared uh, our human life so that we might share in his divine life. He has become our brother so that we might become his brothers and sisters. Son of God that he is, he has given us a share in his relationship with God. 
in his relationship as son. And with him, we can now call God our Father. This is the length to which God has gone in his love for us. As, as we reflect on this great mystery uh, this weekend, we need to ask ourselves, how grateful are we to God for the love he has shown us and continues to show us? Are we honestly trying to live as sons and daughters of God, our Father? Are we honestly trying to live as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, our brother? Are we trying to prepare ourselves for the great future, indeed the great eternity, Jesus has prepared for us? We have much to think about here. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was truly grateful to God for the mystery of the Incarnation, this great mystery that required her cooperation in the most unique way. She has expressed her gratitude in her great prayer of thanksgiving, the prayer we know as the Magnificat. She has expressed it in the way she lived, first of all, in being a loving mother to Jesus, and also in being a loving disciple of Jesus, mother and disciple. His first disciple, and indeed a model disciple for each one of us. So may we too express our thanksgiving for the incarnation in our prayer, especially as we celebrate Mass this weekend, whether you're able to come in person or whether you are watching it on YouTube, but in whatever way, thanking God our Father as his loving children and living as true disciples of Jesus, our Savior and our brother. God bless you. Have a good weekend. Hello, everyone. A few notices. Um, you'll be expecting me to say something about the Christmas masses. Um, the fact is that we're booked up for the two Christmas Eve masses, the six and the nine. The 10 on Christmas morning is all reservable places are booked and the eight is filling up rapidly. So we thought we will have an extra mass at 11.15 at on Christmas morning. And I'll try and get that into the newsletter before it, it goes out. Um, it's great to see so much interest, of course. So we, anyway, uh, tomorrow, Sunday afternoon, we have our final Advent devotions. Everybody's very welcome to come to that. And want to thank you for all your encouragement of these broadcasts. Uh, it's been very interesting to, to do them. And uh, of course, we will continue for as long as, well, we'll continue. Let's not put an end to it. And uh, this Sunday Masses will, as usual, the 11.15 will be broadcast. The Christmas Eve Mass at 6 and the Christmas Day Mass at 10 will both be live streamed. So thanks for all your encouragement and support. And uh, we'll get another chance to wish you a happy Christmas, but let's do it now and hope that the lead up to Christmas is not too frantic. Every blessing. Take good care and a happy Christmas when it comes.